Hello, I'm William C. Anderson, and the title of this reflection is Things I Knew Before I Knew. I felt tempted to quote Dion the whole time I was doing this, but for me, one of the greatest aspects of this text is interrupting repetition. So I will try to talk about what Dion has helped me realize in my own words as much as possible. But I'm honored to recite her too because her words remain so relevant still. People often want to feel accepted, secure, and safe. They want to feel a sense of place and home and belonging, which can lead to tedious journeys. Many people go looking for love in all the wrong places, one of which is the cold embrace of violent nations and states. Under the terms of citizenship, we seek to overcome displacement, loss, and alienation. Dion Brand reminds us of the romanticization and reinvented and reimagined past, as well as the failed romance of na nationalisms and nation building. A few words stick out to me early in the text. Dion mentions, quote, things I knew before I knew, end quote. What were the warning signs before trying to force a non-existent relationship? How did we end up here, coupled yet alone? These things of ours that are not actually ours, structures based on exclusion, weigh on us daily. We fight to be taken care of by people, places, and things that are not designed to produce such a mechanism. This is part of what we knew before we knew. We know we don't have to wait for institutional violence to prove us right by doing us wrong. When I opened up a map to the door of no return, it spoke to a gut feeling. I was out in the water myself looking for land for so long that I began to actually think that if I imagined sores, that they would come to me. We've all been wooed before by the empty affection we call constitutions and the film-like fantasies of political representation that engulf our lives today. But there's more to it. Dion writes, quote, each square foot of the Americas has its nationalism end quote. Then love comes up again. She continues, quote, there are flags and anthems, even a real love for each place, the ways and objects and events which collect intonations. But the door of no return opens all nationalisms to their imaginative void, end quote. You can get to a point where you get so tired of being in pain that fear dissipates. The fear of the unknown can subside when your reality is already a living hell. It begins, to, it begins when you start to question who and where you actually are because place can be filled with confusion and fear. The location that we imagine and the story that we told ourselves about it is interrupted by the uncomfortable truths of a past filled with unanswered questions. The lack of an answer can turn into an excuse or an untruth or a fantasy that we use to comfort ourselves. Dion helps me understand this on a deeper level when she's boldly honest and confronts this head on. She says, quote, too much has been made of origins all origins are arbitrary. This is not to say that they are not also nurturing, but they are essentially coercive and indifferent. Country, nation, these concepts are, of course, deeply indebted to origins, family, tradition, home. Nation states are configurations of origins as exclusionary power structures, which have legitimacy based solely on conquest and acquisition. End quote. Now I've got my feet on the shores. Not a land of my own imagining, but a grounding that's based in humbling complexities as infinite as grains of sand. 
I'm not absorbed by a search for redemption, nor do I focus on being disinherited and trying to reclaim something lost. I rest in understanding that the past is not an object to make me what I want to be. No, the truth of the past I both know and don't know is the guide to help me shape a free future. This all feels like intuition or the embrace of a gut feeling. It feels like something I knew before I had the language to say it aloud now. For a very long time, I felt something was missing in my life. I thought that I was broken into fragments because my story and the story of those that came before me was filled with so much pain. I longed to feel complete, but I had to understand that the idea of completion I was trying to work myself into was not a story I wanted to be a part of. The map I was trying to find my place on was not somewhere I wanted to be found. I even learned that my name and my namesake, William, was not everything that I imagined it to be along the way. I had to learn to look at myself and be okay with the unexpected. This ongoing transformation has informed a practice of letting go that has been of the utmost importance. When I learned to let go, I saw the beauty of spontaneity and self-organization and the beautiful unpredictability of great change in a moment's notice. Now this lovely relationship with impermanence informs so much of who I am. I'm still on a path to better understanding, but having someone to affirm the dimensions I travel through always helps. Thank you, Dion, for helping me.